I was standing by the bedside of a neighbor Who was just about to cross this welly tide And I asked him if he would do me a favor Kindly take this message to the other side If you see my savior, tell him that you saw me when you saw me, I was on my way You may meet some old friend who may ask you for me Tell him I'm coming home someday Though you have to make this journey on without me It's a debt that sooner or later must be paid when you reach that golden city, think about me But don't forget to tell my savior what I said Talk to me You may come across my father or my mother And the burdens of this life they may recall You may chance to see my sister or my brother But please try to see my savior first of all So if you see my savior, then that you saw me When you saw me, I was So that was my version of If You See My Savior by Thomas Dorsey. <clears throat> when in, in his blues period he was known as Georgia Tum, and the arrangement uh, is based on the playing of Ari Isinger. Uh, please do open the video description below for more information on uh, Thomas Dorsey and <clears throat> some interesting links. And also if you're interested, interested in the tablature, there's also a link that will give you more information. We're in standard tuning. Here are my E's. And let's start slowly with the introduction. The song uses an alternating bass pattern. And there's a lot of muting to get that swing feel out of this arrangement. All right, here we go. So that's the introduction, and we start with a C chord, C, going to an A minor, D7, hit down, G7, the easiest with the temp wrap, 3rd fret, 3rd fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret. So, back to C, and a turn around, C7, F. A flat C. All right, one more time. I was standing by the bedside of a neighbor who was just about to cross this swelling tide. Starting with the C chords, I'm playing bars 5 and 6. Open, 
C7, going to the F, and there's a bend and a release. So bar seven and eight. Now you see at the end of bar eight, normally I should have grabbed this chord, the F sharp diminished seven. But I simply moved my temp, kept the partial uh, F chord and went to the C. And I picked that with two finger strings, two and three. So I get that upwards movement of the bass ascending. A minor. D7, G. A bit awkward there, that kind of. So bars 10 and 11, one more time. I'll do it one more time with vocals and I start at bar four. I was standing by the bedside of a neighbor who was just about to cross this swelling tide and I asked him Notice the really the lot of muting and accenting with the right hand. That uh, C7 is really accented. And here I'm, I'm muting with my picking fingers. couple small variations for bar 7 and 8. You'll see the top of the second page. It's just that that G note on the first string that is added. And I think uh, you have to make it your own. That sooner or later must be like that. <coughs> and then we have some variations. If you see my Savior, tell him that you saw me. When you saw me, I was on my way. Those are variations for bar 11 and 12. You slide uh, with a uh, <coughs> D7 chord form. I see there's a lot of thumbing there. And then also some other variations for bars 11 and 12. That is, um, you may come across my father or my mother. And I go 
in the next bar, and it's not in the tap. And I do that. <coughs> you can see that in the performance. Uh, those are little variations that you can invent yourself also and adapt it to your personal style and feeling. <coughs> Don't be afraid to do that. Then we have a very interesting solo. This is a lot of Blind Blake stuff in there and it goes like this. I play it slowly. So this is bar 21 on the second page. One remark about the solo, <clears throat> you will have the tendency of playing this tune probably a bit too fast in the beginning. I was standing by the bedside of the neighbor. And that's okay, and I did a, a, a version many years ago, and that was really, well, in my opinion, too fast, but I was young then and everything was faster in that age. And <clears throat> if you play it too fast, you're gonna see, you're gonna get in a lot of trouble with the solo because... That's too fast. <clears throat> you lose all the, <clears throat> the melodic development, which is quite nice in this solo. It also fits very nicely together. And if you play it too fast, it will, will be lost. So. Let's start with a solo and starts with a C chord. And I slide my pinky in bar 22 to the fifth fret, uh, then index on the third fret, first string, second finger on the fourth fret of the second string, and then we're forming then a C7. Thumb down, strum down. Going to the F, that's a melodic development, bent and back to normal. And open at the end of bar 24. And now we move them to a C chord, barring it's a long A chord moved up. Open. A minor and bending with the third finger on the third fret, second string. Going to a D7 in the, se in the third bar, third, meh, sorry, third beat of the 26th measure. Adding the pinky, leave it there. When you go to bar 27, that G chord. So one more time, that from bar 25 to 27. Blind Blake move in bar 28. And then for some variation we're going to a C. Barring. And in the performance you will barely hear the bass, so don't worry too much. Play it, but softly. Bending that 11th fret, uh, 11th Yes, a fret on the first string. And instead of playing the fourth string, you could play the fifth string and going down. There we're playing 
almost the same movement but in the first position. So one more time, bar 28 till 20. 30, sorry. <laughs> Bending that third fret second string and going to normal back release C7 and then we're going to I call that the Larry Johnson F chord. It's your D7 moved up to the fifth fret and we're adding the index to cover bass strings five and four. Larry Johnson uses this a lot in his uh, songs in the key of C. It's a nice variation for the first position F chord. So, in bar 31, we're going to do a lot of movement in F. So, and then we change to a normal F chord, third fret, third fret on the second string, and the third fret, and the thumb prep. So, and you notice I'm keeping that short with my picking hands. Third page, bar 33. C chord, pinky to the fifth fret first string, pull off, second finger to the fourth fret second string, and then a D chord, G, and C. One more time the bass, the solo. Uh, That's a little variation <coughs> of that uh, third line on the second page. I'm going to a D, uh, G7 there. There. And the ending, well, uh, I think you should try to find. Um, and ending yourself, but what I did, and it's not in the tab, I thought the two and a half pages is more than enough. So uh, I ended on you could play that three times. So C. This is an ending I use a lot. You go to the 8th fret. In, in, in a way it's the 8th fret, 1st string, hammer on, pull off, 3rd fret, that 4th fret, 2nd string. In a way you're walking into a C chord using spots that are in the C chord. C 
so that's it for If You See My Savior. There are several versions of uh, Ari Isinger playing it, and it's also on his first CD. There is the, the rather fast version, and it slowed it down over the years. He also used to play with a capo on the second fret, and in later years he played it without the capo. And listen to uh, Thomas Dorsey, a uh, very interesting figure. All right, have fun with this tune. 